Welcome to a special episode of Entrepreneurship 101. This is our Global Entrepreneurship Week at Penn State episode. And each year, Penn State celebrates the relationships between members of the university and the local entrepreneurial communities we serve. We have all kinds of events going on this week, including virtual presentations, workshops, live streams happening all over our state. At the Penn State Abington Launchbox, not only are we doing this special episode of our podcast, but we have some live streams later in the week. So please check us out at abington.launchbox.psu.edu to learn about all the different events. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alex, our producer. All right. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Entrepreneurship 101, where each week we discuss different topics related to entrepreneurship. In today's episode, we're going to dive into a few topics, one of them being the overcoming the fear of public speaking, what makes a presentation stand out, and what is the best way to network with peers. So for the first topic, let's dive it right into it. Peter is here today. Peter, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking, Alex, and thanks for again producing another episode. And uh, we're uh, from the Abington Launchbox here at Penn State Abington, a place where you can listen to podcasts, uh, partake in video conversations through our YouTube and live streaming services that we have going on. Lots of different topics. And today is one of our main features. We do this every week and we bring some topics to life that hopefully relate to entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity, just giving you something to listen to as you maybe go about your life. So let's get to it. We've got 101 seconds is all we do on Entrepreneurship 101 for each topic. So we'll be through this really quickly. So let's start. Yeah, Peter, let's just dive right into it. I'm going to ask you the first question. So I struggle with fear when public speaking. I think most people do, actually. So how do you overcome fear in the public speaking environment? Yeah, um, I, I don't overcome it. So I, I think I, I still feel it um, every time I walk into a room, every time I go to do my job uh, as, a, as a faculty member, as a professor, as a a uh, person that presents. I mean, here we are doing a podcast and the fear is something that's still there. So maybe I, I, I live with it. I don't know that I have, I'm, I've ever overcome it and I don't expect that I will ever overcome it, but I think I'm, I'm okay with it, right? I cohabitate with my fear. So I, I'm a person that has anxious feelings over lots of things. So simply walking into Target to grab a, you know, a box of cookies is something that uh, I feel fear. I feel anxiety. I uh, get nauseous feelings. I walk into a classroom multiple times a week, every week for the past, I, I think almost 15 years I've been doing that. And every single time I walk in, I have anxious feelings. They're close to fear, but I think that's really important to me. So I don't want to get rid of that feeling. To me, that fear is how I know the thing that I'm doing matters. It matters to me. It probably matters to someone in the room. So when you talk about what are some things I tell myself before I speak is that the fear is part of me, but that fear I think is because the thing I'm about to do, I care about. It matters. And I, honestly, I think I would be concerned if I didn't feel that fear as I was uh, stepping into a room trying to do things. So to me, I, I don't want to say get rid of your fear. I don't even want to say get over your fear, but I would say learn how to live with your fear. And uh, you don't have to become friends with it. You don't have to make it, there's my bell. You don't have to make it something that is uh, trivial, but I think you can make it work for you. What are your thoughts? I, I know this is something that uh, you're, you've been reaching out and looking for advice on, but I'd like to hear what are your thoughts on overcoming fear in the public speaking space? Yeah, I feel like I have to use it as a, like a driver, as motivation, like turn it flip side up. And also, um, just uh, using as like a driver, like I said, and just be able like to use it against my advantage. I know like I'm stepping out of my discomfort zone. So if, if you have fear, you're basically stepping out of unknown territory. So that's basically making you grow. So I have to like, I'm trying to convince myself that I have fear because it's making me step out, but I'm actually growing as a person because I'm actually stepping out and doing something new. But like you said, I'm overcoming fear is one of the hardest things to do in a public speaking environment. I, I don't, truly, I don't think I overcome it at all. I mean, I don't even think I come close to it. Uh, I always have like anxious feelings, like you said, like little doing little things like same with me. I mean, I can do something as little as 
I just wanted to be perfect or try to get the best expectations, but I just had anxious thoughts. So, and it's basically like during a presentation, I have thoughts racing. Not, I'm not even trying to focus on the presentation. Like I'm trying to focus on the audience and then my, my mind goes all around and then it just, I can't focus on the presentation. I lose my thoughts and then it goes from there. But I have to, like, you have to convince yourself. Like I heard a few tips in my manager three one class. Like you have to convince yourself you're the smartest person in the room and that you know the most on your presentation and basically use your nerves to advantage basically uh use uh most people are already nervous during presentations so you're not you're you're in the same boat as everyone else you have to do it and then try to be positive don't let negative thoughts be in there yeah, all good stuff so you're you, you you know quite a lot of it doesn't uh, as we talked about doesn't remove the fear but you can at least the way i frame it you can cohabitate with it so thanks alex so Let's jump in. Topic number two today. We're we're working a little bit of our way through some presentation skills, things like that. We've had a bunch of different activities. Students like Alex have participated in things like case competitions, and, and Alex just did that last week. And um, I think this is a way to build on some of the the feedback and the conversations we were having as a result of that. But let me talk to you, Alex, from your perspective uh, as somebody that's making presentations. You're watching presentations from your peers. What are some things that make a presentation stand out? Is it the slides? Is it um, the energy and enthusiasm that the presenter has? What, what are some things that stand out? And what are you, what, what's some advice you could give a student or, or um, an entrepreneur to help their pitch stand out? I'm going to give you 101 seconds to share your thoughts. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely being passionate and energetic about the slides or presentation also looks great if you're being judged or have judges in the room. Um, the design, like, for example, like we, in our case competition, we said some about brighten up the room or the meal solutions, but we said that, but we didn't show a picture of what it looked like to a customer. And I feel like we missed out on that because if we took a picture of what the customers saw, they can actually, the judges would relate to what we're seeing and be like, oh, maybe we should change that instead of, instead of us just saying, oh, it wasn't as bright or put LED lights, like, it doesn't as, do as much justice as us showing a picture and explain it, what we see from that lens. So I think we missed out on that, but it's just a learning, it's just a learning curve. I mean, this was my first case competition at Penn State and you just learn by doing. And also a presentation makes you stand out too, is like, you got to watch what the judges are doing, but you also have to focus on the presentation. What I mean by that is that how they're reacting to the presentation. Um, if their head's down, if they're nodding with you, if they're nodding with you, that's a good sign. But if they put, start putting their head down or you see them like lose interest, you might have to change course or um, do something to get their interest back. So I want to focus on the audience. As a tip, I would focus on the judges who are actually judging you and see what how they're reacting to the uh, your presentation. And that goes with enthusiasm. Uh, if you're passionate and have enthusiasm about the uh, topic they're going to be more interested and retain or like remember you because it's all about standing out in these presentations so yeah so you know i i'm going to build off i, I have lots of thoughts I, I don't know i'll have to get them out in 101 seconds i'm going to start my 101 seconds right now what stands out to me is first of all combining several things. So making things match up. So the content, the delivery, the visual theme all needs to kind of connect and make sense. So you were talking about some of that where in your presentation, you were talking about lighting and how it could be brightened and that would make an impact, but you didn't have the visual theme to uh, kind of add an exclamation point to the words that were coming out of your mouth. So to me, it's about those uh, at least three stages, right? There's the stage that you're on personally and how you're engaging as, as a person to person. There's the content and how that's connecting as far as communicating the message. But then there's also the visual theme and do those three things match and connect, I think is an important thing to be uh, trying to do. It's hard to do, but I think it's important. The next thing that, that I would suggest is think about your presentation. So if it's a case competition, if you're presenting at a conference or something like that, you usually have a presentation time. So let's say you start at noon on Friday. To me, your presentation starts way before that. So I, I can give an example. I was doing a presentation at a university and 
I was just talking with people in the audience for probably a half hour before the event. Who are they? Why were they there? What were they looking to learn from the event? And when I started my presentation, I shared some of those experiences where I said, oh, I was talking to this person from Pittsburgh today in the audience, and they were talking about how they wanted this. And what that helped me to do is it helped relieve some of my stress, but it also helped me to make a, a strong connection to the audience. And ultimately, to me, that's, that's the fourth and final piece of that puzzle is get connected, whether it's to judges, the audience, whoever it might be, to me is, is make a personal connection. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. I'm going to do a little call to action here. So thank you guys for uh, listening. And don't forget to subscribe. If you're on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. Um, we're always looking for guests. So if you know someone or you think you you would be a good candidate uh, on the podcast, please contact us at abiton.launchbox.psu.edu. And thank you for listening again. Yeah. And again, uh, if you're listening to us on whatever platform, please like, share, rate, review, give us feedback. We would love to make this better, more valuable to you as you listen. And we appreciate anything that you've been giving us, whether it's a minute, 30 seconds, we thank you for tuning in and hearing what we've been working on. Entrepreneurship right. 101, quick bites, so quick. We're already on topic three, last one of the day. Alex, what's the last topic for, that we're going to talk about? Yeah, I may gear this to you, Peter. So the last topic is very relevant for students. So what is the best way to network with your peers, make connections? How do you do it? Network, basically networking. What's the best way to network, Peter? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not the best at networking, but I, I think it's about, again, making personal connections. So I'm going to build off what I was sharing with what makes a presentation stand out is the, the connection to people. So I think LinkedIn is a fine resource, but I also think it's a challenge to make new connections there. One of the things that, that we are expecting as a result of some of the pandemic and the disconnection of people-to-people -people interaction is that we're, we're going to have kind of a supply chain issue with creativity, with strong networks that have been built between people because we haven't really been in the same office. Alex and I uh, have been working together all semester, and I don't know that we've sat in the same building, <laughs> at least at, at any point this semester. We're doing everything virtual, and it's, it's a challenge to build strong connections that way. So I think that's a, a limitation of things like LinkedIn. Zoom, I think, is um, at least a little bit better. But I just uh, saw a professor last night that I've been working with for a year and a half on programs. It's the first time we've ever actually met in person. There's just something about that in-person conversation, that in-person meeting where you get, I, I think, the full component of communication. So you get the tone of voice, you get the words, but you get the body language as well. And I think that's a critical component for establishing new connections. So I think anything you can do to cross paths with people, be at conferences, be in classrooms, be in student organizations and clubs, I think those are the networks that are going to be long-term valuable to you. They're, they're going to have a very strong foundation. And I, I suggest that people think about finding ways to, to get connected personally as you start and grow your um, personal and professional network. But Alex, I'd be interested to hear from you. You're, you're um, of a different generation than I, and I'm sure we see this perspective a little bit differently. So I'd love to hear, what are your thoughts on building a network? How do you connect with peers? And, and how do you make uh, new friends that become part of your network? I'll give you the final 101 seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, I think joining clubs, especially one thing, like you touched that personal connection in person, they're, all, they're basically like-minded people. So you guys already can connect on that and expand your network and think with like-minded people. But a lot of students are on LinkedIn, as we know, and I think that is a great way to connect, but you also need that personal touch. And what I mean by that is that you might have to uh, stand out in the sense that you have to reach off of LinkedIn, like maybe have a phone call or in-person meeting, get some coffee. So if there's any way to get from LinkedIn to Zoom or phone call as quick as possible, that would be great because there's a lot of people making connections. So you're going to have to stand out, like like we mentioned the presentation. There's there's got to be a different. You got to stand out and be different. So if there's if that's just making that personal connection, maybe you guys both like sports or both like something. You guys could talk about something and then talk in person. You will have a way better advantage than just a connection on LinkedIn. Uh, so with like with COVID and everything, everyone has access to Zoom and phone calls and 
virtual conversations. So everyone's basically used to it already. So it's basically the new norm. So everyone will be in tune for that. But like when I went to the case competition, we were trying to look for LinkedIn connections. But when you have those LinkedIn connections, sometimes it's just a connection. And some people are just going for the, the highest connections or I have all this many connections, but it's, it's more about the personal connections rather than how much connections you have. All right. It's our final 101 second block. And that's another episode of Entrepreneurship 101 from the Abington Launchbox. I've been Peter Hornberger, the director of the Abington Launchbox. Alex Angermeyer, our producer, is both a student at Abington and a producer here for the Abington Launchbox. So Alex, thanks again for producing. And uh, I'll turn it over to you for some final uh, words and calls to action as we wrap up for the day. Yeah, thank you for the answers. They're great answers. And thank you guys for what, listening and watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're always looking for guests, like I said. So don't forget to contact us at abiton.launchbox.psu.edu. Thank you again. Great. Thanks. Bye.